rotoscoping in Natron. We have here draw, roto, and roto paint. Let's start with roto. Okay, we connect this here. And we have a few tools on the left here. We have selection tool. We have here um, the possibility to create with Bezier tool, ellipse tool, or rectangle, depending on the shape. We're going to be using Bezier tool. And you also have the possibility to make changes. All right. So let's select um, the Bezier tool. And let's say that we would like to isolate, select this door. Okay. To be able to do something with it. So I'm going to start drawing. Right. And do it very roughly. Okay, so this is really rough, but it gave me enough mistakes to correct later because I need to use a few correction tools for mistakes, okay? Now, this is selected by default, which means that I can change, move my... Um, little dots here if you would like to have more say for example for this part here well you, you can come here and then you've got a list add points okay i need to add a point then you add one here and you could add even one more and then you come back to the selection and you move it a little down something like this another here i need to move the selection again all right. Now, some of these edges are quite harsh. They're quite, uh, these corners are quite, I need to smooth them. We come here and have smooth points. Now, when you click, nothing happens, but it's like you have activated the tool. Now, when you come to any of the points and you click on it, it becomes smooth. Okay. Now, you can't move it yet. You need to come back to the selection tool to be able to move it around. We are going to need one more. Oh, this one needs to be smoothed. And we select and we bring it back. Okay. We may want to smooth this one as well. And this one as well. And this one as well. And add one more here and one more select and bring it a little down bring this one a bit up something like this the idea is not to make a too detailed selection but to give you the idea of the techniques okay now we have this selection what can we do what we can also do just a little bit like this okay what we can what we can what we can do is we can come here and we also have the op the possibility to open or close the shape now if i click open or close it activates it nothing happens but when i click if i click here does it open this part no it opens the shape where did we start we started back here down here so if i click anywhere it will open or close this part click this was open now because i've started here if i click again it closes open close it doesn't open the place where you where you click okay good and you've got a few other tools we've got remove points cross points smooth open close remove feather point tool and we will talk about the feather in a short while okay now that we have this let's say we want of course to isolate just the door well i've got this in the background which is the car this is not the door so i need to select it as well let me do that i'm going to then click on this and get another selection here and I close it of course a few tweaks about the smoothing I smooth this one and this one smooth this this yeah, that's fine. Although it appears a bit weird, but it's fine. Right. I select and start moving around these things to cover exactly where they're meant to be. 
Uh, it's a little bit too much in terms of, um, okay, I've got too many points. What do I do? Do I just remove them? Remove points tool. I don't want to have this one. Okay. So, something like this. All right, smooth this one. Okay. All right. Um, just a quick um, change here. I'm going to remove one of these. Remove points, remove one of them. That should be enough. Okay. Now, what do I, okay, one, just one last, one last. And this should be it. You know what, I'm going to cusp point. Much better. All right, good. Now, now that I have this selected, I am going to move to the alpha. And then you think, well, I thought that we selected that one to remove it. Uh, so I just tapped on A. Yes, we selected it to remove it. Now, where is my door? So this is the door and this is the window. This is the door, this is the window. You have here, in your properties for the roto, a list of whatever shapes you have created. Okay, right. This is the window and it has a, an operation of what? This is over. Now I need it to be difference. Where is my difference? Difference. Okay, now it is gone. So when I go back and I want to act on the door, do anything, I'm going to need to, um, I, I, I can do that, I can do that. But I'm going to need to move it if it's moving, if the camera is moving or if the, um, um, if, if, if the object that is being rotoscoped is moving, the rotoscoping, like the keyframe, this, this stuff, this shape needs to move as well, okay? It needs to be animated. All right, so now what we're going to do is just come here and change the color for this stuff to see one of the users. And since we talked last time about tool, HSV tool, HSV tool, then let's use that. Because last time we had used it on the full image, now we're going to use it only on the door. Mask. And we're going to change the color. Okay, so this way you can target specific areas of your screen and act on them. You can desaturate. You can do all sorts of things, right? You can, well, we can, shall we desaturate this? Color, correct. And instead of doing a mask for this, we're going to get it like this. And we can desaturate this one, just the door. You can act on your selection, okay? Now, enough talking about the Roto node. We are going to move to Roto Paint node now. Roto Paint, I want to use this footage instead, okay? I will delete this one and just stay with this. Let me quickly check. Um, this is 79 frames. Not much, but my project is a lot of frames. So let me just bring it back to 79. Okay, so now that I have this, I want to go back to the first frame. First frame, we have these people and I'm gonna press on F to center it. Good, let's bring in the Roto Paint node. Now you can either type here, Roto Paint, or bring it from the draw menu. I will connect this, we have the background connected, and what do we get? We get the same tools we had for the um, uh, for the roto node, plus some others. Plus we have this, this, and this. So this is what this we have clone and reveal. Here we have blur and smear, and here we have dodge and burn. The most interesting ones, to be honest, are the first ones. Well, you can use the second and third as well. Clone and reveal. These are the ones we're going to be spending um, time on. But I'll just briefly uh, touch on these. Okay, they're not very. Um, 
exciting. This is the most exciting part, is clone and reveal. When you want to duplicate somebody or just make them disappear, all right? But there are a few things that need to happen during production for this to work, all right? So for um, cloning, let's say we want to duplicate this guy. When you click on clone, you get, can you see? There's a, there's a small circle following my cursor. Now, this is a brush. I'm going to increase it to about enough to, um, to be able to select him. Yeah, this should be fine. 170. Yeah, this should be fine. So I'm going to duplicate this guy and just make his copy here in the video. So how do we do that? We're going to stand on the reference, press control, click, and then move it to the side and release. When you release, you now can very simply paint. Yes, you get some um, artifacts sometimes like this, but don't worry, it's just a calculation thing. Sometimes it happens, but everything's gonna be all right. Let me just, I'm doing it very slowly to avoid duplicating uh, too much of the background behind him because we would like, that's it. This should be kind of enough for me. A little bit hurt, that's it, okay. Uh, maybe a bit of his head, yeah. Okay, I think I give him too much of a haircut there. Right, um, somewhat to the right here. Good, okay, so I've got my guy duplicated. Well, maybe I want to duplicate his um, shadow a bit as well. Something like this. I can reduce the size of the brush, of course, to get a bit closer to the other, to the first replica, yeah, to the origin. But for now, we're doing good, okay? So this is how we duplicate a person or an object. There's another thing, let me just bring my circle back to where it belongs. Control again. Okay, I bring back the um, brush to 25 and I move to what? To, um, to the reveal. Reveal. Okay, I don't need this clone anymore because I've already shown you that. I will delete it and we will go with reveal. Reveal is quite, quite useful. It's actually more used than clone because you are going to need to remove people more often than add them. Okay, then more often than, than duplicate them. So if you have somebody in the background that doesn't belong there, if you couldn't get full clearance for the whole area and somebody somewhere, you have a big village that you're shooting in and the inhabitants are so happy to accommodate you, but a kid opened the window and it's a period piece and the child is like um, today's look, that is going to be a problem and you just need to have a clean plate because if he wasn't there in the first place it means that you already had a clean plate so let's say that this guy doesn't belong here and I only need these and the commander so this guy doesn't belong here I'm going to remove him how do I do that let me come back to the video to the sequence copy and paste it I have I have in the last frame I'm going to come here, double click on the copy, and first frame, I'm going to say 79. So first and last are the same, just give me the one frame. And you notice here, it's empty. Now let me show you closer. You can select this one and press 2. This is empty. This is 1, this is 2. So this is a clean plate. It is very important to have your clean plates if you have any visual effects whatsoever that you need to make for any corrections, okay? Clean plates are extremely important. It's something we address during a, a green screen. It's something we address during any post-production that requires visual effects work. Rotoscoping, revealing, cloning, even during clone. When I cloned, I may have added a little bit of the background, but if you have a clean plate, you can come back and clean it again. Okay, let's go back. So I have this as a clean plate. What do I do then? I'm going to connect it as a second background to the Roto Paint. Let me just remove this. What happened now? The Roto Paint has the first background and a second background. This goes behind 
the um, the um, the foreground behind behind this picture. Okay, so if I want to remove this guy, then I will just come here to my roto paint, double click on it, and come to my reveal, and increase the um, the size. What was it? One hundred and seventy. Actually, I don't mind now. I can go bigger because it's fine. I'm just yeah, I can do that. Uh, but I'm going to be closer to his hand, to this guy's hand, to remove the shadow as well. So better be a bit careful. So 150. Yeah, this should work fine. Okay, so and what we do is just start painting the guy out of the plate. Removing him completely. Well, a bit of the edges. It doesn't always do this black um, stuff, black artifacts when you're when you're painting. Um, I've just done it the first time now. Okay, so making sure I keep the shadows of the guys. The guy is gone for a simple reason that I had a great um, clean plate. Now the whole video can run easily without the guy in the in the picture. Okay, so this is these are the two most used uh, functionalities of the Roto Paint. You also have. Let me just re remove the reveal, and then reduce this size to twenty five again. And then you have the. I'll probably keep it like one hundred or one hundred two hundred. And then you have the next one, which is blur and smear. Well, blur does exactly what it does. It's like when you come here and you start um, painting, it's going to blur. Oh, sorry, I am still with the reveal. I'm still with the reveal. That's not good. Let me just remove this reveal. Oh, you see, by the way, that because I have a clean plate, I could even remove these ones. Well, I've just done it by mistake. But... Okay, now I'm on the blur. So if you come here, it, it is going to blur. Well, it's doing this, this black stuff here just for the first time. Don't worry about this. Um, it, it never did it before. And uh, don't worry about it. And you can adjust the opacity and the hardness of the brush and the strength of the effect. Okay, so you can make something blur. Although I think for the blur, um, you, you may want to do it differently, but this is another way to do it. And then you have the smear. Let me just remove the blur again. I'll go just quickly through these ones because it's not really, um, these are not really a big deal. Smear gives you this kind of effect. It's stretching something. It's this stretchy effect over here, see? It, you, you may end up needing this for any stylized something that you want to work with. So uh, I'm, I'm, the option is there. The option is there. I'm moving now to the next one, which is dodge and burn. Well, they are the opposite. So dodge is going to make you, um, depending on the opacity again, um, it, 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 it does this, it, you get this kind of effect. See, it's like um, if you've got a... Uh, uh, a dragon place with the golden whatever sand or whatever uh, this is the kind of effect and I'm gonna keep it in and work with the burn burn does exactly what it says it's, it's, it's just burns it's like burning the image right so and it's something that you can reduce and adjust the the, the strength of the effect with the opacity of the brush okay so the